ministry, the minister no. and the ministry and the, and the councils that were involved and the teams that have gone through the negotiations would have done a good job. Well, well no, no, but after we read it, there was a general, I mean, everybody will admit that questions started being asked. My, my first reaction was, hmm, when their president call us a certain name, what does he want from us? That's, that, 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 that was my first reaction. Then I sat down and said, take, take it easy, go into this thing. Let's go back a little bit. As far back as 1962, and, and okay, before I go, get back to 1962, the critical issues here has a, a bit to do with the, 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 the diplomatic immunity we give to them, right? So that if they commit offenses here, we can't try them, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Cetera, et cetera. In 1962, a couple of years after we became a republic, we passed the Visiting Forces Act, which means that we've always had this issue with foreign forces coming to Ghana. They, it happens routinely. Some come for a couple of days, some come for a few uh, months, some could be years. And Not for America only? Oh, no, no, no. Visiting Forces. Okay. And as a matter of fact, uh, the, my, I first came across this Visiting Forces Act in, my, in that issue, the Argentina issue. That's the first time I saw the act right. myself. Right. This is not taught to us in law school. <laughs> I, I came across the, uh, the, the, the act. And we considered it very carefully to see whether that stopped Ghana from, from, from mm -hmm. what happened. Now, the critical thing about that is we decided in 1962, and it's a still law. Somebody said, but this is a 1962 act. And the guy who said he's a doctor, and I said, unlike your medicines, yes, unlike your medicines, laws don't expire mm. <laughs> until, until we repeal them. So Kuku has printed a copy of no, that. Kuku has it. I have, okay. have a copy here as well. Okay. And there are two critical things in that act. One, <coughs> that if they commit offenses in Ghana, we are dividing which offenses we can try and which offenses they try themselves by what they call the service courts. And so if the offenses have to do with their people like, and their property, they will try them, even though the offenses take place in Ghana. But one critical one which was, which I'd always not in my mind was that any, uh, an act done or anything omitted by the discharge of an official duty, so that if the visiting soldier is, is, is conducting an official duty, and commit an offense, anything, is it an act, or anything omitted, then they get to try them. Any other offense is tried under a criminal code by the Ghana courts. So maybe if he steals that one, you can't say that <laughs> it was in a char discharge of official duty. But so means that if he's driving his car, and he drives recklessly, and hits my car, and somebody dies, his service court will try him. But then we put in a clause, said, no, 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 no. If what he does, affects a civilian, then our defense minister <laughs> and the head of the visiting forces will sit down to discuss whether they try him or our courts try him. And having put this law in place in 1962, this is under Quran and then we put in a clause which says that, but although we have sought to divide our criminal jurisdiction in case there's an offense in Ghana, we can enter into an agreement to alter this. It says this section shall have effect subject to an agreement between the Republic in respect of the visiting force and the sending state to which the force belongs. So that actually the basis of these agreements that we've been entering into, whether we mention them or not, is actually section 2.4, which gives us the power to alter this division of which I find a bit unacceptable, to alter this separation of jurisdiction by an agreement. The next one that caught my attention then it, and still catches my attention has to do with bearing arms and engaging in military training. Now, under our law, that will be offenses to bear arms in Ghana unless you are licensed or and if you engage in any military training. The, the whole thing about the South African forces who were deported, it was because they were, they, they, were, they were deemed to be engaging in an illegal military training. We specifically authorize <coughs> them to do it by saying that our criminal law on bearing arms and holding military services military training will not apply to visiting forces. So ladies and gentlemen, news flash. And I, I know people don't like me when I, when, I, when I present the law this way. But, we, but this is what I said. The provisions of the Criminal Offenses Act, 1960 and 29, relating to military training and exercises and the carrying of offensive weapons shall not apply to a member of a visiting force acting in the course of official duty. So what we have put in this agreement is needless. 
repetitively nonsense. No, 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 some of it, because they've added others. Some of it is based on law. But clearly, under this scenario, and I suspect several scenarios that you and I are not, are not aware of, mm. our government have entered into this and built on this. So there's that history. So I came to look at the uh, 98 agreement. And you are right, it's not the same. It's one page. Mm. But the heart of it is still the heart that is beating today. They've added to it things that we ought to be concerned about. Okay, so hey, do this for me quickly. Tell me. Article 15. Mm -hmm. What is your interpretation of Article 15? Um, <clears throat> as compared to... Mm -hmm. Yes. As compared to this law you refer us to. Now, it says that other than contractual claims, the parties waive any and all claims against each other for damage to or loss or destruction of property owned by the party mm -hmm. or death or injury to any military personnel and civilian employees of either party arising out of the performance of their official duties in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the meaning of this in the face of what it, you just it, read to us from our own law, no, not it, the agreement? It follows from something else. This is, doesn't hang on its own. Mm. You see, under the Vienna Convention, military people are not entitled to diplo di diplomatic immunity. Okay. And very early in the Argentina case, mm. they tried to set up the, 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 the argument that the vessel had diplomatic immunity. It immediately got shut down. Okay. So, oh, so if you decide to extend the Vienna Convention, uh, and we, we also have the Diplomatic Immunities, Immunities Act based on the Vienna Convention. To anybody other than a, um, a, a, a straight-out diplomat, as, it, as it's defined, you need some laws to be, uh, um, to be complied with. In Ghana, in the past, it was the foreign minister doing it alone. But in a couple of recent decisions, the courts have held that the foreign minister can't sit in his office and grant diplomatic immunity. There, there ought to be a parliamentary process. So a lot of the diplomatic immunities we have granted, if we got, got into it, will not have the force of law. Okay. So to the extent that some of these agreements didn't go to parliament, the diplomatic immunities we purported to grant to military people before, this, before now were all invalid. You see, that's the, that's the problem when our governments don't comply with our own laws or we pretend the laws mm. don't exist. Mm. So but let's get to this. These claims arise from diplomatic immunity. Mm. So if there's a diplomat in Ghana and he rents my house, that's a contractual claim. I can sue him if he doesn't pay. But if we have, we have an accident, I'm on a cat. I'm on versus cat. We can't pursue the claim. What you do is that in, in our court, you pursue back channel claims. <coughs> Here, and James, you guys also did the same thing. You know, this okay. waiver. Then the issue. The, the, finally, the embassy proposes that both governments waive any and all claims other than contractual claims, the same language, mm. against each other for laws, damage laws, destruction of property of the de Department of Defense or property of the military of Ghana arising out of related to official duties, injuries suffered by military personnel, etc., etc. Okay, and what Ace just read is the, uh, the 1998 <coughs> agreement between us and, the, right. and I said mm. portions of it have been... Right. But these are necessary incidents of the diplomatic status. That's all. That is where I made a point. That can, 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 you should have given us more time. Because then we will say that mm. if the government of Ghana is going to grant these waivers and immunities to these soldiers, please give us an indemnities act by which the government of Ghana says that if I'm driving my car and I run into an Amer American or maybe Russian or Canadian uh, 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 vehicle here on the basis of this agreement, mm. I can proceed against government of Ghana. Okay. Because what happens in the normal diplomatic world is that you don't go to court, mm. they do backroom channels, <coughs> the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will deal with them. It can take years. I'm, I'm, I'm returning visited. to Agaga now, but because if you can do this quickly for me, Article 18, mm -hmm. still around same issues that people mm -hmm. are really what? enraged about. Mm -hmm. Settlement of disputes. Any dispute regarding the application, implementation, or interpretation of this agreement or its impl implementing arrangements shall be resolved at the lowest level possible and, as necessary, elevated to the executive <coughs> agents for consideration and resolution. Those disputes that cannot be resolved by the executive agents shall be referred to the parties for consultation and resolution as appropriate and shall not be referred to any national or international court, tribunal, or similar body, or to any third party for settlement, unless otherwise mutually agreed. Let me irritate. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me 
Me read the the 130th sign. Then this, oh, is, oh, this is 2015. 2015. So no, 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 so that you can join the two together. No, 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 no. You let me read. 2015. 2015. 2015. Which this is security of information. Yeah. This is the document. Which okay. position is that? Um, security of information. Um, article what? Yeah. Article. That's article yeah, that's six so or so. No, here. right. Article six. One it doesn't say whether it's clause two or so. It says that. No, no. I just want to tell you mm -hmm. the two to go together. It is in. It is yeah. the mm -hmm. intent of yeah. the parties. No, no. In it. In it. Where is it? Uh huh. Okay. That's okay. That's um, is that article nine or eight? Yeah. Interpretation, that's amendment, eight. and revision, revision of information. So, article eight one. Any disagreement regarding the interpretation or application of this agreement, any implementing arrangements, arrangements or transactions executed here under shall be resolved through consultation and negotiation as necessary between the parties and shall not be referred to any national or international tribunal or third party for settlement. Okay. So, okay. so they so are the same, but there's a bit of an improvement yeah, there, there, here. There, there, there's a bit of, you're right. I just want Unless to otherwise mutually agreed. Agree. So we, here, we yeah, added this one. Yeah. Okay. So, so here. Yeah, now, but but, now, but now, you see, oh, you need to look wait, at I'm the... I'm coming to you right away. The, 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 the purpose, I'm coming to you right the away. The purpose let, of this let, act. Let Ace tell us is what he, the implications of this are for Ghana. That is why Parliament should have given us more time. Because then Ghanaians could have digested this. And maybe explanations could have been given. Or maybe changes could have been made to this, and the language of this, <coughs> this language is American. To the extent that even the spelling of material is material, with an E instead of an A at the end. We did some changes, but we did not imprint ourselves on this. And so when somebody reads something which says, disputes will be resolved at the lowest level possible, it sounds snobbish. But if you sit down and look at the, the, the if you if, if, if Ghanaians had, <coughs> had explained to Ghanaians that wait a second, there's this escalating dispute resolution process which you are you start with negotiation, you might do mediation before you hit arbitration, and once you hit arbitration, you actually exclude the courts. That's right. That you could uh, you could do those by your contract. The courts may not be bound by it. They, they're all the all the all the jurisprudence on that one doesn't have to go to, through. So if we had had more time, then maybe Dominic could have explained to Ghanaians that. Because they found this act unacceptable, they tagged in something that, well, if we get there, we can also agree that we'll go to a court or third party. But, but then <coughs> someone should have come in to say, yeah, this sounds nice, but an agreement to, an, to agree isn't valid as, uh, in a contract unless it's supported by constitution. So simply putting unless otherwise ag mutually agreed there doesn't help. In fact, it's mutually agreed, so if they disagree, they disagree, yes, we'll so. go. So it looks nice, but we, we, are, we all have been given the opportunity, Parliament, for all of us to have the time okay. to read, digest, ingest, and contribute to this, maybe all of us, insignificant us. Thank you.